Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. In this next lesson, we're going to take a tour through the interface of After Effects. It's going to be very exciting. So, the first thing we're going to check out is the workspace. When you first open After Effects, it gives you this, it prompts you this window here, and I suggest you leave on the the uh, show welcome tips and uh, tricks of the day start startup. I usually leave that checked. You never know. I'm always learning something new in After Effects. A quick little tip here in the window. I'm going to open up our project here. Let me close all this. So this is the workspace. Now, the workspace is, is kind of comprised of a, a project window, our stage area. We have a timeline, our layers. We have effects. And you can pull up, like, like Photoshop, you can pull up as many windows as you'd like to have here. Uh, for instance, you can see we have uh, some of these actually turned off character. That's for creating text. It kind of pops up there. So each one of these windows, if you grab sort of here in the corners, it kind of moves, it kind of reads what you're doing here. It kind of resizes. So it really depends on the project. They have different presets here in your workspace area where you have uh, all panels showing, just effects, motion tracking, and whatnot. So it really just depends on what you're doing. Uh, you can also set your workspace up and different, so you can unlock the, each docking panel. So After Effects calls them palettes, palettes, or here in After Effects they're called, you know, you know uh, windows or panels. Um, you can also change, if you want to go into the settings or the preferences, you can change the, the basic display of After Effects. If I click ahead here, you can change the the brightness of your workspace. So it really depends what what uh, how you like what kind of project you work on, how you like to have it set. So if you go to uh, let's go back over here, the next thing we want to look at is our project window. In the project window, basically that's sort of the hub. That's where you import everything. That's all your files are kept. Um, it's where you're going to keep your, your audio files, uh, your footage files. It basically, the more you keep this area organized, the easier it will be to work in After Effects. Uh, in the project window, uh, as you can tell, we're, 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 that's highlighted right now because that's the active window we're working in. If you move around in different panels here, you can see the gold trim around each panel kind of comes to life here. So. We're in the project window. I usually sort of, we'll get into organization later, but I keep them kind of organized here, my compositions, audio elements, renders, anything I bring into here. Because if you click the pull downs here, you can see here's all my uh, footage files and whatnot. So over here, if we, at the bottom of the project window, if I click this button here, it interprets the footage. So for instance, if I have this highlighted, this uh, video file, I click this button here, and it kind of it prompts the window. This is, this is all the information about that clip that's highlighted here. I click OK. Uh, this is where we can create a new folder, this button here. As you can see, it's ready to create. It prompts you, new folder. And over here is where we can actually use this button here to create a new composition, which we'll get into in a minute. It prompts up the comp settings. And of course, there's a trash can here, and you can move this over if it gets too busy in here. You can also, what's nice about the project window, is let's say I need to, to uh, try to find out where an actual file is kept that's already been imported. If I want to check out the path of that file, I can pull my project window out here and see the file path. See. There's a type of file, the size, and the path. So it's kept here on one of my drives. So that's your project window. Uh, the next part of our tour would be compositions. So compositions are really almost like containers for each part of your, of your story or your footage or your project. So We'll get, we'll get to the timeline in, but each one of these is a composition here. 
that's self-contained. So this is where compositions are created. So this is our composition window, or you got to think of it more like a stage. Uh, when you create a composition, which we'll create one from scratch later, it will it will look something like this, and in the composition you have uh, all the properties down here at the at the bottom here you have different toggle buttons and switches. Uh, here's where I could select whether I want uh, while I'm working. You're going to see that if you work in full resolution and you have a slow computer, it's going to get kind of bogged down. I like to work at half resolution, even quarter resolution, and that's where you'd make that selection here. Here we have um, different channels, all your RGB channels here. If you wanted to just work in your red channel, green, blue, alpha channels and whatnot, uh, go back to RGB. Different camera views are here. Uh, here's where we have our actual uh, current time indicator. This is to turn it on, masks on and off. If they Sometimes when you're working, you have all these different things going on, like paths and, and motion masks and, and everything. So to not see those temporarily, you can click this button here. Here's where we could turn on and off our title safe uh, area. A lot of times when you're working in, in graphics or television, you want to know the title safe and the action safe area. You don't have to have that turned on all the time. Here's where, where we can... You know, in After Effects, like Photoshop, there's like at least, you know, five to ten ways to do the same thing. So here is where we can scale in our composition or scale out. A lot of times I'm hitting um, our arrow keys here or, you know, command plus or minus. You're always going to be kind of uh, zooming in and zooming out when you're working on certain areas. Um, so, yeah, let's go back over here and next would be layers. Let's turn our layers on. And layers, again, are, are very similar to Photoshop. And I would say it's kind of like Photoshop with wings. So down here, here's our timeline area. And these are where our layers are kept. So it's almost like an editing program and Photoshop kind of put together, where each layer has its own properties. So for instance, I were if I were to uh, open up this layer here and we have different transform properties each layer everything is brought into this window here will have these properties ready for you to start working in keyframing so in this case it, it's always going to have your anchor point position scale rotation in this case let's back up a bit here and this is the Sally shoot movie so you could see if we keep going down and shrink down the timeline a bit this movie does not appear, this sequence here does not appear until we get to right about here, around eight minutes in, and that's where it appears on the time indicator there. And there she is shooting. So if I turn this layer off, she disappears. So if I kind of zoom in, if I kind of zoom in our timeline here, you can see that each one of these, if I had to turn this off, for instance, we're in our, one of our titles here. Revenge has never been so sweet. If I turn that layer off, the text, that layer turns off there. And you could have this uh, composition set so you could see it like Photoshop, like a transparency. Turn that back on. So layers is where you're going to be doing a lot of your adjusting. Um, if you move down here, we could turn some of these into 3D layers, which we'll get into. Motion blur. There's lots of uh, modes and switches. Uh, if I hit control here, I can add more properties to each layer. Uh, for instance, we might get into modes, again, similar to Photoshop, where we can turn a layer and change their, their values, uh, multiply, add, lighten, dark, screen, the whole bits in there. So but when you're working, it gets a little too cumbersome. If you're not using those values, you might as well turn some of these columns off by hitting hide this. You can move these around. You can rename your layers. So you're really going to be working in here, you know, composition and your timeline area. These are your layers. The layers are like your actors, and your composition area are, is like a stage. That's the best way to explain it. Uh, go back over here. We kind of b briefly mentioned the timeline. The timeline. Is it, again, it's similar to an editing program. So you have your time indicator. 
Uh, we hit spacebar. It'll render this way. Uh, you can also hit your RAM preview, hitting letter uh, number zero on your numeric keypad here, and it renders. We'll get into rendering. There you go. Shoot them up. So here, this is the timeline, like I said. And you could set this for frames, or you could set it for seconds. Uh, some people in animation like to, to work in frames. Uh, when you're working with a client, it's helpful to, you know, make a, a correction or revision. Say, well, what frame is it on? You know, what, what's the time on that? Um, you can click your actual timeline. Let's say you needed to get to a specific time. You can click that, and you can type in your values here, and it'll it, the actual timeline indicator will go to that point in time. So that's kind of your timeline. There's little tricks which we'll get into. You can set markers for different areas. Um, you can stretch out the timeline. You can, like editing programs, you can, you can grab the timeline here and stretch it or shrink it. Uh, next would be our RAM uh, preview, audio and text. So after Effects, like I said, it, it's a it's a very powerful program. Um, shrink that back up. You can add text. You can. There's different uh, values here. So while we're working in After Effects, your the goal is to get everything how you would like it to be. You're going to set the stage, your colors, your timing, and then you can see a RAM preview. So before you actually render it out to a QuickTime movie. Uh, you can do a RAM preview here, and you click this button here, or again, you could hit the letter zero, the number zero on the numeric, numeric keypad, and it gives you a preview of what you're doing before you render it out into a movie. Let's do a little preview here. I'll hit play. Okay. So now, that's a preview. Now with audio, After Effects handles audio, and you can see this is the only layer here that has audio. That has, you can tell because it has a little speaker symbol turned on. And I could turn that on and off, and if I want to, I can actually open up this value here. There is transformation, and then we have audio. And if I open up the waveform, you can actually see the audio in that layer. I can even hold down Command and scrub the audio. Now, as far as text goes, let me open up the text composition here. And you can see that each, each one of these layers here is a text layer. Now, if I want to, let's say I wanted to change this word sweet to another layer. And I can base it similar to, to Photoshop. It has a text tool. I'm going to highlight that. I'm simply going to type in a new word. Sweet and sour. So next thing on the tour here is rendering. So rendering basically means once we've compiled everything and we're, we're set to make a movie. Now it, you can render out to almost any format you can imagine. And to do that, we would add something to our render queue area here. And let's say we wanted to render out this movie right now. We would uh, go up here, and we're going to add to render queue. And what it does is it prompts uh, the render settings. So what you want to do is you can click here, and here's where you can make all of your configurations here, uh, best draft, wireframe, uh, the resolution. You can uh, select the size here. If you go to the output module, we're basically trying to get it out of After Effects and render it into a self-contained movie. Here's our more output settings, which we'll get into later on. Here you can see there are all kinds of different formats. Uh, you have the H.264. You have uh, MP3 sequences you can make, ping sequences, TIFF sequences. It's really all in there. Um, you have format options here where you can uh, render out in different uh, compression rates, different codecs. With all of today's cameras, uh, After Effects will definitely have a setting for you. And uh, then here we're going to output where, where we output to. So 
we're going to click the output to and you're going to name your file here and we're going to render out a movie. So really you just want to give yourself a nice learning curve time and you know you really learn each aspect of, of After Effects. Thank you for watching educator.com. I'll see you at the next lesson.